lovely here. So it's like, was that like in July then? (laughs) This was yesterday evening, Nick. We're breaking down this golf swing. This is from an anonymous golfer that sent this in. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you like that we're doing that, that anonymous golfers keep sending us in scorecards and golf swings and stuff to check out? Crazy. Where do these people come from? (laughs) I don't know. Um, so this is this is my golf swing, and, and you're gonna you're gonna break it down today, Nick. I'm excited. This is gonna be fun. Yes, man. We're we're uh, doing something cool with virtual lessons. I wanted to make you test case number. That's like number 100 for me, but first one we probably have done publicly. So let's uh, take a look at this thing. I might need Absolutely. Let me borrow the screen from you. There you go. Perfect, Matt. What do you think? Awesome. Cordy's thinking right there. By the way. Oh gosh, I thought we were going to get away from this. How did how did guys, this end up on here? Well, while Matt's thinking about it, he can open. Getting ready to say the uh, getting ready to say the inside part out loud. I think <laughs> he might be. So here's like uh, here's Golf Tech Clubhouse. So what uh, what Cordy did, and what we're going to talk about today, is that we're launching uh, free virtual golf lessons for everybody in North America. Surprise! Here's our little gift to you and a way to to give back. But a lot of people haven't really been through this. So you go to golftech.com. Uh, slash app, and you'll find uh, a way to download the application that we have for uh, iPhone and Android. But inside of a uh, golf tech portal, everybody, every student has a golf tech uh, clubhouse account. So I'm looking at Cordy's here. From here, you can book a virtual lesson. You can review some lessons. Like this is the one I just did with Cordy. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, get right into my game, and you can watch all the lessons you've ever done, see all the results from the club fittings. Uh, it's a pretty cool little spot. So here's the swing that Cordy just uh, submitted. He can submit one swing and I'll take a look at it and we'll have a little Zoom call. So let's get into maybe a touch of what it is. So the experience that you'll get, um, you submit that one swing. I can throw that into our, our tech swing software and then compare you to someone who perhaps hits shots differently than you do, better, worse, whatever. But uh, in Cordy's example, he swings a few degrees to the left of the target or hits these little fades towards the hole. He's really good at it. Um, but I wanted to show him someone who hits it a different way and why they, they play golf that way. So we're going to compare that, take a look at the Zoom interaction that we've got and go from there. But the rest of this uh, clubhouse is pretty cool. Um, check out schedule and be able to schedule lessons in the future. Anything that's in your profile, including your bag catalog and a few different traits there. So uh, we started, we uh, shot the breeze a little bit, talking about just his game and where he hits shots. And then from there, we started looking at uh, a few of his swings. So I've just got a comparison of Cordy here that's playing inside of our software. And this is what a student will get. They'll get a comparison of themselves versus someone who hits the ball better than they want to or wherever it is that they do want to and in here we're just looking at some side-by-side comparisons of what makes Cordy uh, swing to the left a few degrees and we're about to see it as it approaches here so when both of these guys have their arms parallel to the ground their left arm you can see a little difference in the shaft looking at Cordy's how the angle of the shaft is uh, uh, if I continue this out past the shaft it's going to stretch out past the ball we'll see that here in a second and then the uh, stud golfer who plays golf for a living, how his aim's a little bit different. The more you start twisting the shaft that way, the more likely you are to slice. And there's the top of Cordy swing. So he does a really nice job on the way down, um, avoiding swinging 10 degrees to the left, which is very likely from people who come in like that. So if you're a student of the game, uh, the way to demonstrate the shaft is like the, the player on the right there. Uh, the shaft wouldn't be parallel to the ground at the top of the swing. Uh, at least in a model swing that I would use until it's parallel to the ground, then it would point at the target. But every time in between there, it would aim slightly to the left. So we talked a touch about that and then jumped right into um, really how he needed to move himself around differently than that. So from here, we're able to have an interactive Zoom call together, just talking about uh, uh, what, what Corey should do different, what that would feel like. So I'm demonstrating Cordy versus uh, non-Cordy. Harvey decided while I wasn't paying attention, he was going to rub his face on the net for a little while. But uh, then we got to demonstrate some of that. Cordy got up and moved himself around too. And that's really the gist of how this interaction goes back and forth. When you're done, the video sits right here, uh, the Zoom call that we did, plus those screen recordings. Uh, They don't go anywhere for a long, long time. They're going to sit right there in your clubhouse. 
So what do you think about uh, uh, is that a pretty decent synopsis, Cordy? I mean, you got any takeaways in there that I might have missed or something you thought was interesting? Yeah, no, I think that's that's a great synopsis. So uh, I've always swung a little bit to the a little bit to the left. I enjoy hitting cuts. Uh, I very much dislike seeing the ball go left. Um, and no, I think what you explained makes a lot of sense is the way that I, um, you know, at the top of the backswing, the position I'm in makes it very conducive to have the path that I have, have the attack angle that I have and whatnot. So, um, changing that makes a lot of sense. Do you want to, do you want to show kind of what you suggest and why you suggest? Um, for yeah. Me? How about, uh, I'll just hit play on the, the recording. I'll share Perfect. my screen here and, uh, go from there that part we just looked at was the actual golf instruction so here you go oh, i can't quite hear we're not quite hearing that nick on uh sorry you're not hearing that cordy no we're not you might have to walk us through it okay so uh, let's just walk guide right through that one. So Cordy at the top of his swing, and maybe you can mock this one out too, Cordy, since you're a pro at doing it. Uh, on the backswing, when his left arm's parallel to the ground, he turns his left forearm a little bit too many degrees, a few too many degrees. And then at the very top of the swing, the shaft aims to the left a lot. So at this point in time, um, nothing bad has to happen when he hits the ball. But if I wanted to slice every ball, uh, and swing at least three degrees to the left, that would be a really good way to do it. If I wanted to make sure I never swung three degrees to the left, I would move the shaft the other way, um, predisposing my swing direction to be too far into out by doing that. So for Cordy to only swing three degrees to the left and aim the shaft as far away from the target as he does is pretty good. He demonstrates a lot of nice parts of his swing on the way down to then straighten out his swing direction and ultimately only swing three degrees to the left. So if you didn't want to slice anymore, if you did want to just straighten out your swing direction, you could on the way back practice uh, uh, in a strange way. So instead of where the piece where you turn your forearm too much, that it was just- Hold on, hold on. Did you say if I, if I don't want to slice anymore? Well, you know, if you didn't want, yes, that's what I said. So uh, at the top of the swing, when he turns his arm a few degrees more than, than uh, most people who do hit it straight, a way that he could practice not doing that stop slicing Corey would be to make a backswing where you felt like the sweet spot was always from uh, your point of view to the right of the butt end of the club. So here it is when the shaft's parallel to the ground. Here it is when your left arm's parallel to the ground. And here's the feeling of how the top of the swing would work. So you'd actually never uh, pronate or roll your left arm too much that way. So okay, while well, that's let, uh, let me let me see if I can demonstrate this. So I'm doing yeah. okay. So if I'm doing this, I'm doing too much of of which way. So I'm going like this. Which way am I going yeah. too much of? Turn it to your right. So you're gonna keep turning the top of your arm upward, and then turn it a few more degrees than that, where your thumb's almost pointed down. That's how much you twist your left arm in the backswing, and okay. that's the part that's making the shaft just keep rolling and rolling and rolling, and ultimately aim too far to the left. So to stop you from twisting your wrist so much, a way to do that is actually start to bend your wrist the other way in the backswing, turn your forearm the other direction. Yeah. So, I'm going so that's like what you do. Yeah. The so anti, on the backswing. Anti-John Rom. You got it, anti-John Rom. yeah. So uh, uh, Pat Perez was the person I might've mentioned in the lesson. He's uh, always had a similar struggle to you. And if anything, he has a hard time drawing, drawing shots as well. So one of the directions I told him so was basically the same thing. Keep the butt under the club moving uh, inward, but always keep the sweet spot almost over your head throughout the whole swing. And that's the way to stop training your forearm to turn so much. It's not a normal swing. It's just sort of the pill you would take or the knob you would turn to help you just stop eliminating so much roll of the shaft. All right, let's, let's see if we can do this. Um, so here, uh, let's see if I can not break a light and success. So, this. so demo old Cordy first. Yep. So old Cordy would go like, I'm, I'm good. Here we go. I would go like this. Right? Or even more. Yeah. That's a pretty good representative for sure. You got it. Yep. Now, how would you do the back swing as we were practicing? Just aim the shaft a little straight here at the top. So I, I would just aim it straighter here. Let's see. So I would go like this. Okay. So and I would tell you that if you're... 
keep going more when you practice. Yeah. As uh, bizarre as that feels, that's your practice swing to keep the shaft straight. And you just about have it. I'd still keep on the backswing, Cordy. Keep moving your hands behind you. They uh, shouldn't go. They don't have to feel like they're lifting up as much. Keep moving those around. It's the sweet spot always to the inside of your hands. Pretty good. It's starting to look pretty straight. You wouldn't have the shaft as laid off as that term, uh, that dogmatic term really is. And then at the top, you've got a swing direction that's straighter. So you're likely to have a, a path that's closer to zero that way. And, and again, obviously, feel is not real in this scenario. So trying to feel something that it's not going to it's not going to look like kind of what you're describing me to feel. No, not um, at first. I think that's the hit. important part of like the Zoom interaction is I can watch you demonstrate that a few times, tell you, yes, that your feel that's in your head is enough or not enough. And then you do it again, and pretty soon we're, we're almost to the equivalent. We might be 80% of the way there actually having a golf lesson first. And I think this is really cool, too, for our coaches. Our coaches are taught to essentially not touch anyone in a golf lesson anyway, um, to use your words, and the message that comes out of your mouth has to be so uh, clean and pure enough where someone can hear you, understand you, and change their swing. The, the coaches all over the country who are going to do these are, are prepped. They're ready. Well, I think the students are prepped too, because there's so much more, uh, there's, there's, when you think of the comfort level people have with virtual anything, uh, yeah. just think of the number of Zoom meetings you've had in the last eight or nine weeks. Um, I think th this is a time to embrace some, some new stuff, both by, by necessity, because of the situation we're all in, but also I think there's a way to communicate a coach and a student can communicate and when it's not as easy to get to a lesson as it would be otherwise. So I think there's some, for, for coaches that do it right, there's, I think there's some advantages here for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We're even working on a few different ways to do this. Like uh, perhaps you could be a student come in and have your coach not be with, not be there. Maybe they're at home. They flip the script 180 degrees. We're trying to do everything we can to make this a, a cool and safe experience for everybody. But this is something that golf is needed anyway. It's just the opportunity for people who don't take golf lessons to get exposed to that. And more, and then, way, uh, more, ways, more ways, more ways to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And our friend uh, Mike Statura from Golf Digest just wrote a, an article about that that you can find on on Mike's Twitter page or Golf Digest Twitter page or our Facebook and Twitter page. So. I'd encourage everybody to check that one out. I, I did his before yours, Cordy. I feel like he's slightly uh, more important. So that's why I, he went first. He would dispute that, but <laughs> <laughs> he totally would. And so would I, but you know, this, that's how Cordy and I roll these days. I mean, the other thing that's important to, to mention, my, I have three kids, uh, an 11 year old, an eight year old, and a six year old. And the, all of the things that have come their way uh, through remote school, like what we've had for the last couple of months, um, it's only the adults that have had felt that have felt roadblocks and how those things should unfold. The kids take to it quickly. The screens are a part of their everyday life. And I think as we go forward and people like it, and I, and I shudder to think people, you know, as my 11 year old becomes a 15 year old and a 20 year old and a 25 year old, the comfort level with interacting through screens, I mean, this is, this is the way a lot of things are going to go. So um, yeah. I think it, like you said, there are, there are some innovations that need to happen in golf. And uh, I think we're going mean, to, hopefully that's part of the positive that we can take out of some of the things that are happening these days. Yeah. And uh, uh, Mike's one of Mike's uh, questions to me was, is this going to stop once we get, uh, once things become more normal and our business picks up? And I, I don't think so. I think we're going to keep this thing rolling a long time. And it might be an interesting way even for uh uh, coaches that maybe even aren't your own to be able to help you out. So right. if you wanted to get a club fitting from someone that only does club fitting, we can potentially set that up via Zoom now, which is maybe an interesting point too. It wasn't quite ready for this, as you can tell as I'm dropping clubs, but another piece of the virtual content that we're going to do, um, and I want to keep talking about Cordy Swing too, because that's a lot of fun. But uh, one thing you can do is that we're going to give everybody two virtual lesson credits to, to get started. I didn't know where else to start, so let's go there. So one of those you can use for a lesson, like what we did with Cordy. It's like 15 or 20 minutes. It'll be enough to get you started and practice a few swings, mock them out, be around a professional coach. Everyone who is serious about golf should do that. Give it a try. 
And then uh, the other one is that you can take your golf clubs and then I'm asking everyone to take a picture of their golf bag before they submit for the appointment. But uh, if they don't want to, that's fine as well. If you're interested in buying something new, uh, bring your golf bag out and have a Zoom call with a professional coach who can help you make a good buying decision too. They might be able to tell you or he or she might be able to tell you, uh, the driver, eight and a half degrees aloft, you told me you were a 30 handicapper. Are you sure that's what you need? You might want to look into that. Or if you have something like this that's all shiny in the back, you know, so there's no cavity there, uh, pretty much no one watching this right now should be using these. They can tell you that for sure, what might be holding you back. But if you had a question about what driver should I buy, we have some interesting um, pictures that we can display as well. Like uh, we've seen it a bunch, or I think if you've caught any of the previous shows, as I drop more, more stuff, we've been drawing the location of the center of gravity on different golf clubs. Well, we're, we have slides that we'll be able to present and show people too about why that matters and give everyone an education that might be somewhat unique too. And still do that in maybe 15 or 20 minutes so it's convenient, but at the end of it, you got a pretty good takeaway. And all that'll live inside the clubhouse like you saw before. So I'm super excited about all this. Can't say any of it's easy. And it's a pretty massive team effort that we're doing, but I think this is uh, uh, something the golf world should be paying attention to. Yeah, even Cordy shouldn't be using those blades. No, no. Even though I know Cordy shoots about even par and we give him a ton of, well, I do. I give him a, a ton of garbage about his game. He's actually quite good. I'm amazingly well, surprised. I, we're all, we are all surprised, I'll be honest. Um, those aren't your irons, are they, Nick, that you, that you put no. up there? Okay. We have some, we have demo clubs here. I've been fortunate enough to be stuck at the office like every single day for a long time every day. So I just grab whatever's around here. But hey no, Nick, so, so I, one of the hardest parts that I find about virtual lessons is getting feedback when as a student, you go try to learn this, try to go work on this. Yeah. Right. So kind of this, this feel that you gave me, what kind of feedback should I be using? Cause I, you know, I don't have you there with me. Yep. Um, and it'd be hard for me to figure this out on my own. So, so what do you recommend for feedback? And I think this is, I, it, maybe you feel the same way, but one of the biggest challenges of virtual lesson is good feedback when you're practicing some of these things. Yeah. So that's where I would say this probably gets you 80% there. Um, not a hundred percent for, for a real golf lesson as if we were standing there. But, uh, I think I might've mentioned it even in the video, the way you'd practice this is for you go to the range, do your side view camera again and then practice the top of the swing and having the shaft aiming much straighter. You could then take a look at the, the video and you yourself are, are then monitoring and watching the same thing I am. So if you see the shaft over here or even further to the left, you know that you need to feel like you're doing it even more. So I think you asked me uh, as well, what's like another way to do that? Another way to practice that at home? Another way to get like feedback? You could do all sorts of different things. Arrow points up, slide it in your watch or your golf glove, or you could just use the face of your of your watch as well. So that arrow is just aiming up. I would practice in your house without a club even. Just go to where your left arm's parallel to the ground. And then for you, uh, the here's where that arrow would would be pointing. It's almost aiming like right at the corner of my computer right now. The way you'd practice that is keep twisting your arms, your left arm or the, the watch face starts moving back towards the camera and the arrow is almost pointed straight up and until you could make that sort of backswing and recognize that, what you're really just practicing is how to twist the shaft enough so that it's never laid off as many degrees and setting your swing direction too far out to end. So you got, you got a host of different ways. That's uh, one topic that'll be covered in all of those lessons done virtually will be what how do you practice this at home and how do you know if you're doing it enough i still think the best tool is really just a camera for you at home to try to get better but the hard part for the reason uh i'd say the reason amateurs struggle with the camera piece is that you don't you have to also have an education of knowing what to look for so that's what these virtual lessons will help you do help you tell you where to put the camera how it should work but then how what you should be watching for and you, out of all people, Cordy, should be spending no other time worrying about is your backswing just quite right, other than just how much you're going to twist the shaft and stop doing it so much. What, what do you say? So I, this 
just an interesting topic, place to go. A lot of people will say that the backswing doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not necessarily about the backswing, um, but that's something you you approach when looking at my swing. I think what's great is you explained exactly why. It's not just an aesthetic uh, reason to, to make the change. Um, but yeah, what's kind of your take on that philosophy of the backswing doesn't matter? Yeah, good question. And it can be really deep. So I'll try to make it simple. The first thing that I'm really doing to try to figure out how to help you is watch you hit the ball and then how the club and the ball are interacting to make that happen. So you said when we started, sometimes you hit pull draws. You don't really like to do that. Um, I think mainly your swing direction is to the left and your face angle is a little close to the path on those shots. And that's what you're hitting. So I might start with a uh, good open up the club face some when you hit, but just changing your swing direction from three to the left to a little straighter would help. So then every single position of your swing really gives you a chance to uh, hypothesize where that shot might go. So when the, when you're set up at a dress and you open up your shoulders to the target where my back is now facing you guys, what I've really done is set up my swing direction to be massively out to in that way. So even at a dress, I've set up my swing direction a certain way. You can keep going down that theme all the way through the swing. So when you had the shaft parallel to the ground, there was nothing screaming of all the different parts of the swing I'm measuring internally inside my head that said you're going to hit it too far to the left or to the right. Same thing when your humerus is parallel to the ground, other than you had already started to twist the shaft a little bit. So you had your swing direction is a little programmed to the left. Then at the top, you had really turned the shaft too much in that video. So at this point in time, your swing direction might be aimed 10 degrees to the left, doing this as I'm demonstrating. Now on the way down, you overcome that by changing that. You lower the shaft well, you don't continue to push it out like most of the slicers do, and continue to swing 10 degrees to the left. So the point of you doing the top of the backswing different had nothing to do with anything other than you don't want to hit pull draws. So there's the first point in time where you did struggle a bit with the swing direction. Love it. Makes a ton of sense. Matt, it, it, is that something that you've, I, I'm sure you've heard that over the years of, of people talking about that idea of, um, you know, the back swing doesn't matter or something like that. What, what are yours? Oh, sure. I, whether they mean it literally or figuratively, I, you know, Ledbetter's hadn't said the A swing kind of stuff where you start from a different backswing position. Um, I've done pieces with Hank Haney where he has people uh, come up out of their posture and do something closer to a baseball swing in the backswing. And, um, and in both of those cases, I think what they're trying to accomplish is just what Nick is describing, which is get people thinking about a chain reaction of events closer to a chain reaction that they intend to set in motion as opposed to one that uh, wrecks the car, so to speak. And um, so I think, I think anything is fair game, whether it's an obstacle on the ground. I've seen Nick give great lessons where he put, you know, where he puts a, even a little, a, a box uh, where your the, the golf balls work, where, where you've got some kind of feedback element that you're trying to avoid hitting. You're, you're, you're creating ways for your body and, and your in your brain to to respond to something instead of trying to sort it all out in the less than one second you have to actually make the movement. I think I think all those things are 100% valid. And Cordy, I might uh, elaborate because your question was, does this backswing matter? And I would say it does, and it is a very important part of it. They don't all backswings don't all need to look the same, but you see so much of the teaching philosophy that has been discussed even on the show that we're doing is really about how to do the early phases of the backswing, how to move the club back till it's parallel to the ground a certain way. Um, I definitely think the golf world's a little too tied up in the stuff that happens too early in the swing and it happens at such a slow rate. So while people at home are probably used to worrying about whether or not the shaft is exactly right when it's parallel to the ground, that is like the, the last 5% that most people should be worried right. about. The downswing, and how to move themselves around even as much into the follow through is the beginning and the most important part. I'm, I'm hoping we can keep talking more about that with the people that we do bring on here, but uh, don't worry so much about the little stuff in the backswing. It does play a role, especially the better you get so right. to your level of golfer. You're trying to change your swing direction a few degrees. Anything in the backswing can ultimately change that a couple of degrees. Yeah. I think one of the neatest concepts about backswing and about work, you know, the, the stuff that you're trying to do to, to, to hit a ball far. I think the, the one concept is that you need 
as much time and space as possible to generate speed. If you uh, if you shorten things, make things smaller, uh, try to uh, you have much you have much shorter window of time to do work, and that requires you to, to accelerate the club and and do things that uh, if you're not an explosive kind of uh, person, you're, you're just not going to have time to do. And then uh, number two, the the idea that tour players are doing something different and special than you, uh, they're actually doing less than you are. They're they are rerouting the club less. They are getting out of their own way. They're, they're, they're doing fewer things than you are, not more things than you are. And that allows them to swing the club faster than you do. I think those are two concepts that are lost on a 20 handicapper or a, or a 30 handicapper. They think that they think that Dustin Johnson is doing all these many more things than he or she is to hit the ball better. He's actually doing you know, routing the club in, in fewer ways than you are. Yep. Corey is pretty good. Look at that hair flying around, Matt. Does it make you – Make you jealous? Yeah, my hair flies around. Yeah. <laughs> Cordy, what's your angle of attack with your driver? How many down are you? Um, and if you unmute yourself, you will yeah. hear your answer. Does that help? Um, That's better. Yeah, that was... I'm getting used to the Zoom thing. So, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't remember off the top of my head, unfortunately. Um, I don't think it's that far down. Yeah, um, a couple degrees. Yeah. But I, I mean, what's interesting is I am a much better driver of the golf ball than yeah. iron, iron play. Um, and I don't know if you have any clues to why, but um, it is it is definitely more of the strength than. Well, well when you say that, can you play. elaborate a little bit for me? Because uh, while you do the same, you have the same tendencies in here um, with your driver as you did in iron. What? Yeah. Uh, how much worse is your iron hitting than your driver? Is it? just that the shots aren't close enough to the hole or do you miss greens? I, I mean, I just know from strokes gain data, I, is, is, I so yeah. I actually I can speak to this uh, with some data, which is great. Isn't that nice to yes. be able to do that? Yes. That's um, what I like to hear. So <laughs> it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to help most of the time when people say, you yeah, know, I'm a pretty good putter. I just rarely ever four putt. I don't know really how to start with that. Uh, so when you say I'm a bad iron player relative to my driver, uh, I'm interested in your strokes gained. Is there a yardage that is tough for you? Is there a uh, shot should, should that we look? sticks in your head? Yeah. Let's, let's take should a we look? look? I've, you know, I've used, um, I've used Mark Brody's golf metrics app. Um, and I'll take a month and I'll try to religiously track everything. And, um, you know, just to have something to, something to speak of. Yeah, that's what serious golfers do, man. And I'm try I applaud you for tracking all these shots. I, I wish more of golf them did that, but it's just not easy to do. Um, that's why we're working on a pretty simple way to to help with the strokes gain piece. I want to be able to do this in a bay, Cordy. Um, go in, have you hit like seven shots for, with your seven iron. Track where those things go. Then tell you um, exactly where you should be aiming on every hole that you want to play and ideas like that are still in their infancy that would also help us really get down to the root of that question of where do you hit these irons that make you feel like they're not uh, a strong point of your game yeah let's see here so so i've got um so this is com this this might be a little bit tricky but this is compared to a scratch golfer mm -hmm. um on on brody's app uh with this is six rounds from last year. Um, as you'll tell from what I'm about to say, it was the six best rounds of the year. Okay. All uh, right. I'm kidding. Um, I, I don't know. This is just randomly selected, but a plus eight with a driving plus three with approach, um, uh, one handicap with short game and then plus four with putting. So that's not bad. Yeah. Um, You're still living in that plus three range with the, the iron play. <laughs> yeah. So let's see, what do, what do we got here? Um, 150 to 200 was the, the worst part of, um, of the approach play. Okay, and what, what's the pattern of, uh, this has to be more subjective now, so when you do miss a shot from 150 to 200, let's, let's even get like to the higher end there. You got 190 yards, you're yeah. either gonna hit a really good shot or what's gonna happen? Uh, I hit a little thin and right, and it'll be thin short right. right. Yeah. There's so there's more. There. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep getting you more back into the uh, shallower angle of attack, swing more to the right, play with the face more close to the path, just practice drawing those shots from 190, which is really all that instruction we were talking about. 
to help you avoid that thin cutting right shot. Yep. That'd even be yep. a great way to practice. Stand at 190, hit, hit five straight shots and try to draw them all. Even if they start too straight or miss the target to the left, that for you would be a great way to use that data that you have uh, as an effective way to practice. Yeah. No, this is this is pretty good. If, if folks aren't tracking it, like like you said, like you're working on something, there's simple simple ways to track strokes gained, um, and it'll spit out great little. I don't know if you can see this. There yeah. we go. But but um, you know, great stuff that might be backwards for y'all, but uh, great insights there. And you could you know you can pick your best rounds, your worst rounds, and get different different kind of things. But um, yeah. I've always enjoyed a... tracking that. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, man, that's, that's great. I don't do it and I don't have too many players that voluntarily just track their rounds. So you're, you're doing the right thing. I'm working on a way to make this even easier because I know you don't want to do that on the golf course and I haven't met anyone who really does. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Matt, uh, you think North America will be somewhat interested in getting a, having a conversation with a coach about their golf game? I, number one, yes. Number two, if you can go have a conversation immediately for free, I don't know why you wouldn't try it. And yeah, I think yeah. this is a business about relationships and finding people you like to help you do stuff you like to do. So, um, I mean, selfishly, for, for Golf Digest, we want as many people out there loving to play golf and wanting to read about golf and hear about golf and talk about golf as we can get. So, the better you do, the better we do. I'm trying, man. I won't let you down. <laughs> and I, I think it's I great. Sign up for one, if I sign up yeah. for one, I want to get it from you, though. Does it, does okay. It we'll have to finagle the system. The way we have this set up uh, is, is maybe worth touching on just for a second. If you live in Dallas, Texas, and you want one of these, we're going to try to send you to the Dallas, Texas location and one of the great coaches there. So you can at least feel like this is someone near and dear. And if you want help from them afterwards, they're, they're there. That's a Makes sense. Perfect way to go. I know you just opened a, a place in Westport, which is uh, eight miles from here. So uh, yeah. I'll do it, and I'll try one from the from the coach in Westport and see how it goes. That's good. That's good. If you send me a couple dollars, I might be able to give you a few extra credits to use. It's a deal. <laughs> Otherwise, the uh, the one I really want, uh, the one I'm most interested in, Cordy, which uh, the golf lesson stuff. I don't know. I've been doing that a long time. I'm I'm cool with that. Our coaches are pros. I think the students will get the most out of uh, a different experience. Like, show me your driver. Tell me where you hit the ball. Do you want to buy a driver? Here's what you should try when we get uh, back into the shopping spree world again. And uh, that'll just save so many people so much money to help them buy the right stuff. And if you have just like a golf question, that's what that virtual lesson can be. It doesn't have to be uh, everything you want to know about your swing, but just an idea that might be rocking around in your brain, or maybe you heard some gibberish from our buddy Brandel Chambly on the Golf Channel, and you want to know if he's telling the truth or not. We can we can answer those questions for you. You can vet all those uh, golf magazine tips that don't seem to work very well. <laughs> Hi, Luke. That was that was a good one, Matt. That was a good one. <laughs> I do what I can. Oh, hey, I, and I got a virtual lesson, and I. I haven't regretted it yet. Um, well, well, it was an hour ago, so that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> oh, no, this is great. I'm excited to go try this. What What do we do? I, I should follow up with you here in a little bit. We should get a swing maybe in a, in a week or two and see what's happening. Yeah. Well, let's do that, and let's do the, the, the club piece as well. I want to see everything that's in your bag anyway. Um, or maybe you have a picture of one of your friend's bags. Share me, share something like that with me. Somebody might need that type of service and let's go through that. Cause I think that'll be cool. And in let's the meantime, it. tomorrow we've got uh, my friend Ryan Steenberg, who is uh, one of the largest individuals I've ever met in my life. And he's going to tell us how to uh, get strong for some golf fitness. Love Cordy, it. we going to have he's a contest got... tomorrow. I, I'm sure we can come up with something. Um, yeah. I, I've chatted with Ryan before. I had him on the had him on the podcast, and um, he's got some fascinating stories to tell. So, um, oh good. Well, I'm, I'm, well, I, yeah, you well, I especially want out. to hear about about his uh, his business stuff as well. And yeah. um, I think there is definitely a competition in the store for us tomorrow. Oh good. 
Okay. Well, sneak peek at tomorrow. Ryan did a, a some exclusive content for us, and I'll show you how to get that and where it's at. And like honestly, the dude is uh, number eight in the world long drive rankings right now, and I don't know what's keeping him from being number one. I'm going to ask him about that tomorrow. But uh, if you want to hit the ball far, you, you should be following the people who hit the ball far, not uh, uh, follow their their advice. There might be something to that. So uh, that'll be a fun show for tomorrow. Perfect. Matt, if I get my swing turned around, what's it going to take for me to get a, get a two page swing breakdown in golf digest? Is it going to be close? If I, if I, get I, don't, that know if I, can, I don't know if I can promise you a spread in the magazine, but I, I can, uh, if you want to, you can put it up on Instagram and I'll, I'll write a little, I'll write something for the website on you. How about that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> that'll go so well. You'll be on the cover next. Yes. Yep. Hey, it's a big day for you, Cordy. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Cordy. We'll see y'all. See you guys.